Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Robert Kosofsky. I'm an associate professor at Imperial College Business School. Uh, welcome to this short webinar about the complete risk management course. We've got about 30 minutes and what I'd like to do is to briefly introduce myself and then introduce the course. My research interests lie in the area of investment and risk management with a special focus on alternative investments. And I've been uh, teaching and then directing executive education programs for uh, more than 10 years um, in many different countries. Uh, the types of research uh, that I've uh, carried out over the last couple of years uh, have uh, varied, but one of them that I just wanted to highlight and also tie in with the courses related to the global financial crisis and um, the risk of correlations unexpectedly increasing. Uh, the reason why this is a particular relevant example is that we would like to equip you with a sense of foresight so that after doing this course you will also be able to in a sense anticipate events and make risk management decisions with um, a forward-looking view. Um, in 2007 we started a research project on an underappreciated risk in uh, hedge funds and um, in particular long short portfolios and our hypothesis was that risks um, in portfolios that are long and short could be bigger than in portfolios that are only long despite the uh, attempt to uh, hedge the risk through short positions and we created a novel uh, measure of risk using so-called correlation swaps and as the financial crisis hit in 2008, uh, the results became stronger and our hypothesis was validated and this research um, uh, won an award and had great relevance for the risk on uh, banking books, for example, unexpectedly changing and also in asset management positions. And uh, myself and the other instructors will try to equip you with the risk management tools that will allow you to hedge risks, monitor risks, but also through the understanding of the underlying economic dynamics, anticipate events, hopefully. The question that I would like to start with is, why do we need risk management? And the answer is that the world is changing in many different ways. There are technological changes, regulatory changes, also changes in the area of new risks that um, make risk management more and more important. I've chosen this picture here of a, a fishbowl um, because organizations, be it banks, asset management firms or other corporates, uh, have to become more transparent in the way that they measure risk. Um, capital requirements around the world are increasing, uh, explicit the risk management functions are required by regulators. Um, there are also legal requirements in many countries for board members to understand risk management. All of these things make risk management more and more relevant. I would like to highlight some of the um, catalysts in particular and how we address them in the course. Uh, one issue that keeps a lot of companies um, awake at night is cyber security. The losses to banks and other companies related to um, uh, hacking attacks are in the billions of dollars every year. And uh, as part of the operational risk module, when we discuss operational risk, we will also highlight the role of cybersecurity and how to guard against cybersecurity using the um, Data Science Institute and their so called data observatory. Basel III. The Dodd-Frank Act, all of these have uh, great implications in terms of the uh, capital requirements and profitability of banks. Climate change is a new risk. It affects not just uh, the long term but also the short term. Uh, it has impact on profitability, on stock price performance, uh, through the um, carbon footprint of companies and activities. And one of our colleagues, Enrico Biffis, who's teaching on the program is an expert in this area and he has uh, done research on new risks including space weather. So the risk of solar storms knocking out telecommunication systems, knocking out um, uh, financial services uh, networks 
is real and has been estimated to be to the order of uh, several trillion uh, dollars. Counterparty risk has come to the forefront uh, as a result of the global financial crisis and the demise of Lehman Brothers, but measuring counterparty risk is neither conceptually nor practically easy. Uh, you may have seen in the press that there are great disagreements regarding counterparty risk adjustments, so-called uh, CVA credit value adjustments. Um, Damiano Brigo, a colleague from the Mathematical Finance Group, who's an expert in the area, will discuss uh, default risk and counterparty risk um, in, in great detail in one of the modules in uh, day um, four. And you will see that there is also a discrepancy between how one should theoretically uh, adjust for counterparty risk and current practice. So what is likely to happen is that practice will catch up with, um, with, with theory in this area um, because of the um, um, inconsistencies in, in current uh, counterparty risk adjustments and hopefully this course will allow you to anticipate how risk management in this area will change. Another area in which uh, Imperial is at the forefront is the area of computer science and also big data. Um, it's a catchy term that uh, you've, you've all come across over the last couple of years, but we will also look in detail at how big data can be used to improve risk management practice. A lot of traditional risk management has been on statistical measures and a relatively limited number of data. Uh, big data can be harnessed and um, used in order to improve our understanding of risks, but also decision making. And we will discuss it in the course and also um, link up with the data observatory uh, to see how it can be done in practice. One example that I would like to highlight is the cost of regulation and capital requirements. So before we are able to discuss this, we will in uh, stages build up the course, start with the basics, we will give you a big picture overview of risk management and then go into the details by inter introducing basic statistics and the basic notion of risk adjustments and how uh, risk adjusted returns are affected by higher risk. Basel III is um, a, a international uh, regulatory requirement that affects how much capital banks need to set aside for their activities, be they uh, loans um, or in, in their banking books or their trading books. It also has implications for asset managers um, and other financial services firms. And in 2012, um, Fitch uh, estimated that the total increase in the capital um, that will have to be set aside will reduce the return on equity by about 2% globally. So this is a very significant and economically important impact of regulation and essentially it's um, the result of uh, a change in risk management practice and the way that uh, regulation changes how risk management is carried out. We will discuss the basic underlying ideas behind risk adjustments, uh, behind risk-weighted capital and measures of performance such as a return on equity. In this context we'll also discuss how banks and other financial institutions, including asset managers, can uh, reduce or optimize the, the charges uh, by changing their behavior um, as well as uh, the models that they use to um, measure risks. The practice of risk management is also responding. Board members are increasingly focusing on risk management this is partly the result of regulatory requirements, but also the realization that risk management is absolutely essential to the performance and success and survival of firms. Enterprise risk management, which is in a sense a holistic uh, approach to risk management, not just financial risk management, but also operational risk management and uh, the broader sense of um, risk conduct and risk culture, is becoming a standard in the way that organizations approach risk. Stress tests are one approach to risk management that is becoming more and more popular and is also required by regulators. We will discuss what it is, how it is done, and um, how it can be used to improve decisions. And finally, we'll also talk about risk culture. In all of this, we'll take a very practical 
perspective. Most of the instructors um, have either current or extensive past experience in uh, implementing risk management systems in, in practice. And one of the elements that we will highlight after covering the basics is how to actually affect real-world decision-making using these tools. So how do we go from the basic statistics and um, hedging tools to affecting board-level decision-making? So a lot of it will be about communication, and we will also carry out a risk management uh, simulation in our unique carbon capture lab, where you will need to make a risk management decision as a team under pressure. To highlight some of the ideas from the previous slide, here I brought up um, an extract from um, the Lloyd University Press survey, um, which found that 92% of respondents indicated that enterprise risk management is an important uh, process, and this has increased since the, from 33% in 2008. And what we will try to do throughout the course is we will try to highlight all the different facets and angles of risk management. We will cover market risk management, we will cover credit risk management, we will cover financial risk management, but we will also conclude with operational risk management and enterprise risk management. And Marcus Krebs, who has uh, several decades of risk management experience and practice, will run you through practical examples of um, the challenges that he has encountered, as well as his successes in implementing risk management in practice and affecting board level and management level decisions. Another interesting statistic from the Deloitte University Press report is that 85% of respondents said that board directors regularly devote more time to the oversight of risk than they did uh, just two years ago. So one of the uh, reasons why this is important is, first of all, a lot of you in the audience will be senior professionals with um, board level or um, a senior management level uh, decision-making authority, and you will either or you will either have to communicate these um, risk management um, uh, tools and uh, insights to the board, or incorporate them into your decision making. And we will discuss in detail. Uh, how to do this and what the challenges are in practice. Some of you will be chief risk officers. The um, importance of the chief risk officer position has dramatically increased over the last 10 years. In the Deloitte University Press study, 75% of respondents reported that the institution has written an enterprise level uh, statement of risk appetite that has been approved by the board of directors, uh, which highlights how important risk culture and risk conduct is in uh, risk management uh, in practice. One aspect of risk management that we will cover will be financial risk management. What I mean by that is we will, after covering the basic statistics to measure risk and monitor risk, we will look at how risk can be managed and measured in financial markets. and. We will start off with market risk, but we will also measure credit risk. Uh, we will discuss interest rate risk in the context of a bank. So we will ask what is the basic, what is the first and most important risk that a bank faces. We will introduce asset liability management, look at the balance sheet of the bank and ask what is it trying to do? How has risk management changed? And we will see how over the years, um, Asset liability matching has moved from uh, effect, uh, from changing the duration um, of the um, assets and liabilities uh, without using derivatives to how derivatives and complex derivatives such as swaps can be used and what the increase in efficiency is. Then we will also talk about counterparty risk. Uh, one cannot discuss counterparty risk without introducing credit risk and Damiano Brigo uh, we'll discuss latest advances in it. He's um, also a pioneer conceptually and theoretically in the area, apart, apart from having been a managerial director at Fitch uh, for several years. Uh, so he's very well placed to discuss counterparty risk and the latest trends, the trends therein. Mortality risk affects um, pension funds, uh, especially defined benefit, defined benefit plans. Enrico Biffis is an actuarial expert that will discuss this and apply um, 
the um, uh, risk management tools to, to this area. And we will also discuss the importance of liquidity risk management and catastrophes. Uh, again, Professor Biffis has carried out research on solar storms, on terrorist attacks, how to quantify them, how to measure them and incorporate them into risk management. And we will therefore have a holistic approach to all of the risks that can be quantified and those that can't be quantified when we talk about um, enterprise risk management. What are the learning objectives? So, as I mentioned earlier, one of the things that we would like to equip you with is financial foresight. What I mean by that is we expect more than just equipping you with statistical tools. We expect to do more than just equipping you with the basic understanding of financial markets. We want to help you understand the dynamics in financial markets, but also societal, environmental uh, dynamics that help you anticipate risks and look, in a sense, through the windscreen as opposed to the rearview mirror. This we will do in two ways. One is by sharing our experience, anecdotes, insights, and learning points from, from consulting and work experience, but also by highlighting the dynamics where we start from A to D and by knowing the dynamics can anticipate how we will go to B and C and make decisions before we even reach B and C. To do that, we will cover the basics, introduce you to the statistics, but also the basics of finance, the basics of risk management, how financial markets work, and we will cover the major asset classes, equities, bonds, commodities, but also foreign exchange, introduce derivatives instruments, and explain how they can be used to hedge financial risks. And finally, we will also discuss paradigm changes in global banking and asset management and financial services firms. As you know, London is a center for fintech. There's great competition in the financial services industry through the application of big data, uh, cloud services, um, but also other technological changes that mean that risk management practices are changing dramatically. Another paradigm shift comes from changes in regulation. Regulation increases capital requirements. It forces banks to be leaner, to pay more attention to risk management. And then we we'll also discuss the very important aspect of corporate governance, which um, affects how an organization works, how incentives, are addressed, what incentives are at play, uh, incentives internally, incentives externally, whether the preferences of the shareholders and equity holders are correctly taken into account by the board management and uh, risk takers. And we will also look at the role of regulation as a key catalyst in uh, the recent years. So who should attend? Essentially, anyone that is monitoring risks or taking uh, risk decisions should seriously consider this course. We want to create a complete risk management perspective by highlighting risk from both a financial, societal, environmental, operational, but also technological perspective. And we will be able to achieve that in the course of these five intensive days. Examples of participants in the past included chief risk officers, market and credit liquidity operational risk specialists, but we also had regulators, we had representatives from major sovereign wealth funds, auditors, operations and IT personnel. Some participants had computer science backgrounds and worked in software development and operations and then moved to um, more senior management roles and wanted to learn about financial markets, latest changes in financial markets and risk management practice. But we also had financial engineers and business managers. Um, in terms of the geography, we are a very international group, both in terms of the faculty but also participants. And um, we found that participants also learned a lot from each other and we as instructors learned a lot from you. What are the benefits for your organization? 
Well, risk management is becoming more and more important. It's essential to survival. The way that I like to think about it is sometimes in, the, in terms of an analogy of a boxing match. Um, a successful boxer will uh, be able to have a long successful career as, as long as he's able to uh, stand up. Uh, one thing that we want to avoid is a knockout blow and that's where risk management comes in. Any organization can generate significant profit but if it ignores a risk that may prove lethal at some point, it will not be able to survive and be viable in the long term. So we will take very much a medium to long term perspective in terms of the challenges that financial institutions face. Um, the uh, Bank One uh, case study, for example, will look at how risk management in banks has changed over the last 30, 40 years and make an outlook to where we will be heading in the next 10 years. We will also look at how there are opportunities to innovate, in particular in the areas of, for example, big data, in the areas of taking into account new risks, um, how many uh, banks, for example, um, address cyber security in a sophisticated way, how many banks worry about solar storms and have contingency plans. Um, all of these um, areas we will discuss and analyze and highlight where there may be room for innovation in new organizations. And finally, we will also look at the challenges and the solutions. So we'll have always a practical perspective. We will highlight why sometimes institutional constraints and incentives prevent best practice, prevent the theoretically optimal approach. And we will discuss how, um, in a sense, one can achieve a second best by trying to do one's best while taking into account institutional constraints. Um, these relate to sometimes effectively communicating um, or not be able, being able to communicate communicate in organizations, but also um, constraints to communicating externally to the public, to shareholders, to investors uh, when it comes to risk management decisions, risk management metrics. What makes the program unique? Um, the program is unique because we'll be drawing on the resources and intellectual assets and networks of Imperial College in a way that uh, I haven't seen done uh, before in other courses. Um, we will have a simulation case study using the Carbon Capture Lab where you will have to face a crisis as a team. It will help you to uh, bond as a group but also work efficiently as a team to communicate, make decisions under stress. You will have to then also consider what we can learn as um, uh, financial practitioners from other areas such as risk management in the energy or nuclear industry and how to communicate effectively outside your organization. For that we will draw on the engineering pedigree of Imperial and the Carbon Capture Lab. This will also help us make impact. You will have a tangible approach to risk management. It's not going to be theoretical. It's going to be uh, using physical resources, actual risk management decisions and we'll also ask you to wear hard hats during one of those simulations. Another uh, example of the impact lab philosophy will be in the Data Science um, Institute a Data Observatory. You will look at um, the case of uh, a cyber attack, um, how to um, identify it, how to respond to it, how to incorporate it into enterprise risk management. And Marcus Krebs will run you through his experience and make recommendations of how to um, um, optimally implement enterprise risk management and operational risk management in practice. As a sample timetable on day one, we will provide the big picture first so that you will be able to anticipate how each module and how each building block will fit into the big picture. Big picture. From the outset, outset we will be uh, cognizant of people and processes. Uh, not just statistical metrics or um, complex um, financial instruments. We will look at uh, operational risk, introduce the notion of asset liability management and then um, later in the, off, in, the, in the morning on the first day take you to the carbon capture lab where you will have to make risk management decisions during a crisis situation. It is a facility spread out over several floors uh, that has proven uh, very successful in um, illustrating risk management um, under, under stress. 
uh, in, during days two and three and four, uh, we will discuss market risk management, uh, value at risk, uh, capital requirements, credit risk, counterparty risk, and latest uh, trends therein, before concluding during the last um, uh, day uh, with uh, capital allocation from the point of view of banks, an introduction to economic capital, but also macro prudential regulation. Uh, where we will discuss the uh, global financial crisis, um, key takeaways from the global financial crisis, and we are fortunate to have a former Bank of England Monetary Policy Committee member, um, uh, David, uh, Professor David Miles, uh, who will uh, talk about macroprudential regulation, the challenges that banks have in responding to crises and managing risks, but also uh, the implications for us of uh, central bank decisions and uh, the rules that they set for markets. We will conclude uh, again with a big picture perspective during the last afternoon uh, in the form of enterprise risk management and operational risk. And Marcus Krebs will tie in all of the building blocks that you discussed during the, fir during the, the five days and um, this discuss how they can be used in practice, what are the challenges of um, using these innovations in practice, and um, how to communicate risk management decisions uh, at the board level um, and effectively make decisions. The course runs from June 26th until July 1st, and you will be um, presented with a an Imperial College Premier Certificate of Attendance following the course. Uh, to apply and for more information, please um, follow the hyperlink on this slide. Um, now there is time for questions. Uh, there is a question when a new start is planned. If I understand correctly, that's a question um, as to when a repeat of the course would be done. So um, this is likely to be at least uh, six months from July, so likely to be in 2017. So um, we will probably not run another iteration of this course this year. Um, so the start date for this uh, course is on June 26th. There is another question regarding availability at the moment. Um, uh, we've already received a lot of applications, but there are still spaces left uh, for uh, the June uh, 26th course. Um, if I understand correctly, um, one of you is asking a question about prerequisites uh, for attending. Um, so we have no particular prerequisites in terms of degrees or um, uh, quantitative uh, skills, but um, it would be helpful if you had a basic understanding of um, statistics, but even if, you're, if you're, your, your statistics um, are a bit rusty, uh, not to worry, we will uh, create a level playing field during the first afternoon following the Carbon Capture Lab where Professor Zeffaroni will introduce and uh, refresh your knowledge of uh, basic statistics that we will use. Um, yes, and I think one of you pointed out um, the start date, so um, thanks for correcting me there. So the start date is on uh, June the 27th, a Monday, I apologize, not uh, June the 26th. So the course starts on June the 27th and ends on July the 1st. Um, there is a um, question regarding equivalency regarding the Premier exam. Um, I will let my colleague Julia Coyne answer that question um, online.
it seems we don't have any more questions at this stage. Um, if you have any questions um, or any uh, issues related to the course that you would like to discuss, don't hesitate to contact me directly. You can find my email address online um, or contact my colleague, um, Julia Coyne. I thank you very much for your time and for attending the webinar. I uh, hope to see you um, in June and uh, wish you a good afternoon.